one. Hi, Chad from Balsa USA here, your friendly builder. Uh, have requests to learn how to do landing gear, us show how we do the landing gear. Um, so I'm going to talk over that. This is going to be the first part of it is going to be soldering it up, cleaning it, getting it ready. And then we're going to make another part later on and that'll be putting the wooden fairings on. Uh, we had a couple requests on that also. So first thing I want to talk about is some of the tools that I use um, for doing it. Now when you get started, a good Scotch-Brite pad and you want to use just mild dish detergent and hot water and you want to scrub the heck out of your wires. There's going to be oil on them, stuff like that. That's all going to ruin your solder joints. So you need to have them perfectly clean. You can see how shiny they are. You can tell I was rubbing on them for a while. Um, so once you get that done, uh, then you want to have a good uh, silver solder. We use the Stay Bright stuff. Um, you can see there, we don't use rosin core. Um, you can get this at any hardware store in the plumbing department, stuff like that. Um, got copper wire. Use a, a good, not crazy thick, but you want a decently thick uh, copper wire there. Um, this is an 18 gauge is what I have here. Um, and then you want a, a good flux. Um, you got to have your wet sponge for cleaning off the tip of your iron. And the iron is the key thing. Um, you need to have a decent sized iron, a big iron. This is a 175 watt iron. Um, you can get them right around $55. I just looked up the price because I need to order one for my house. Um, so as of today, they're running $55. It's not a bad price. Um, the advantage of the 175 watt iron is you're going to get a big 5 eighths inch chisel tip. Um, and that's going to hold the heat and be able to transfer the heat into the wire to, to make it so that it melts properly, gets warm enough. Otherwise, you're going to end up with cold solder joints. So I'll get started showing you how I like to wrap the wire. I take uh, needle nose pliers and I just like to bend a 90 degree on there. And what that does is it sets in a little groove and that uh, helps it so that I can get started. So then you wrap it around. get it going on here all right once you get it started if I can get it started here it's simple enough you want to keep your your wraps as tight as you can and as neat as you can and you can come back and and fix that up so that it looks a little nicer so once you get it started readjust your your wires again so that it's right and just keep going until you get it all wrapped what the wrap does is it works like uh, the rebar or screening and concrete um, and it works like that for the flux uh, or the for the solder picture the solder as like the concrete and this would be your rebar um, it's going to really strengthen the solder strengthen the whole joint um, it works together with the solder to create uh, the best um, possible uh, strength joint. Um, so once you get that, I like to take the, the pliers and bend that over tight so that it's tight against it. I'll squeeze it, take this and re-bend that in there. Got my little end here, we can cut that off. Um, if it stays tucked in, it's fine. If it comes out, you can just snip it with the side cutters. And then uh, use your pliers to make sure it's nice and flat against there. All right, so now I got that wrapped nice and good. Um, the reason you want to make it look neat is because you are going to see some of the wire through the solder joint. Um, you don't have to fill it crazy full. Um, so now I'll take my just a regular epoxy or acid brush and I like to make the, the fiber small so that you can get um, get some good stiffness on it and and I'll just paint a little bit of that on make sure that I squeeze it down in there make sure I get the bottom um, another big error that a lot of people do is they'll actually use too much uh, flux um, too much flux can ruin your your joint just as much as not using flux um, so make sure that you put it on you want it on but you don't want it built up a half inch and then uh, take your soldering gun your, or your solder and iron. Put a little solder on there, get her started, and then just push up to it. You'll see the flux starts to melt. 
let it sit on there for a little bit still not warm you want to touch on the top you don't want to use the tip to melt it you want to wait until the wire gets warm enough to melt it itself you also want to make sure you do this in a a good um, ventilated area because there will be a lot of fumes now you can see it's starting to melt starting to get there now you understand why you need to have such a big iron <clears throat> now it's starting to soak in there so I'll slowly work it in and it's gonna drip on you so make sure you don't have your leg underneath it stuff like that and you just want to uh, fill everything in here good you can pull it off while you're doing it it'll help uh, control the temp because you don't want to get it too too warm to where it doesn't fill in the areas if you warm it up too much it won't fill in the areas at all so just wick it in keep wicking it in until it's uh, good and full and I mean uh, don't be afraid to let some drop on the ground or, or waste a little bit so that you're assured you got a good joint now you can see it cooled off a little bit too much um, but it's still going here alrighty and that's that now I'll take and uh, just use my sponge while it's still wet I'll take and clean it up being careful not to uh, get my fingers Cool it down a bit and and you have a nice uh, nice clean solder joint um, next time I'll with the next video I'll show how to put the wood fairings on and then after that I'll show we like to use brass tubing for our wheels it makes a really nice clean axle you can put a cotter key in it and i'll show that in, in the third part of the series so until next time happy building i hope this is what you like guys are uh, doing and making it look good